Hi y'all, it's Chris with Shell Fitness, also here with Chris. He is a trainer at Equinox and he went through Show Up Fitness how long ago? Almost two years. Yeah, almost two years. And so we're going to talk about the life of a trainer at the big EQ and where he's at now. So you've been there for how long? About a year and seven, eight months. So he sent me a pretty cool text not too long ago. The rankings were about 3,000 trainers at Equinox, and yeah. he was number 70. So that's that's pretty significant when you think of the percentage of where you're at. So you've come a long way, and we just want to hear your story. We want to hear about the life of a trainer, what you like, uh, some challenges, and, and where you're at now, where you want to be. So talk to us a little bit. Well, what do you want to know, exactly? Take me through a typical day for you now versus when you started up and some of the hurdles that you experienced. Um, I guess I'll start with where I started. So when I started at Equinox, I probably worked the same amount of hours that I do now. I just got paid a lot less for it. Um, when you start at Equinox, you have a lot of mandatory stuff you have to do as a ramper, is what they call it, which is basically a new trainer. Uh, so that includes things like four shifts, EFTI, uh, ramper meetings, and special events, pretty much a lot, a lot of like the dirty work that happens around the gym, cleaning up weights, doing the special events to bring in new clients, ramper meetings, which is basically uh, education for how to learn to be a better trainer, mm -hmm. um, and then EFTI, which is like their in-house educational program where you learn more kinesiology, biomechanics, you know, exercise science, all that. So you do a lot more of that and a lot less training in the beginning and then as you build your business you do less of all those things um, the goal as a ramper is to do 95 sessions in a month or 42 sessions in two weeks twice in a row so like what every ramper's goal is so everything he's doing or she's doing is to get that and then you're considered a full-time trainer when you do that and obviously if you drop back below you have to do some of those things again not all of them but some of them you have to go back to doing like four shifts mm -hmm. um, so I think I did that when I started I pretty much I, my business spiked pretty fast but then it crashed again really fast because I built I kind of came in during peak season like April was when I started actually training so my business like jumped really fast and then it kind of started crashing, which I've seen happen a lot with a lot of trainers in the beginning. They spike fast and then they crash again, and then it's whether or not you build up again that makes the difference. Very few of them will like go up and stay up. It's like going up, crashing, and then being willing to get through that crash and go and do yeah. still back out of it. Whether that storm. Yeah, exactly. And so like crash was very unfortunately like right, right around like, July, which is the huge dip in training in July at Equinox because a lot of people go on vacation. Most of our members are like really rich, so they want to go to the Maltese and shit when they're that customer. <laughs> so they want to like go to Maltese or whatever and they're gone for a week, two weeks, and that just affects your business. Yeah. Um, and then October's usually, usually, this year it wasn't, but last year it's like this this peak again and where everyone wants to train. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because they want to look good in Halloween costumes or what it is, or everyone's back to school, I don't know what it is, but everyone kind of trains again. And then holidays, obviously, it dips. Yep. So I kind of hit my full time in that October Okay. after my crash. So I went up and then crashed and then hit full time and then crashed again during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then the new year, it's weird too because people think that January is great for trainers, but it's not. It's great for gyms. So like a lot of people get memberships, but not everyone's training yep. until like February mm -hmm. usually. They want to like get into a groove. So your business kind of starts off slow, but then it goes up for like the entire summer until July. Yep. So that was like what my experience was. And like, honestly, I struggled that first year. It was like I would get a client, lose one, get a client, lose one, and I was doing all that extra work too, so I was still working long hours, but mostly just getting paid minimum wage for most of it. Um, and then when the new year came, I don't really know what happened to me, but I was just like, I'm gonna do things my way for a while and see what happens. And my business shot up really fast, 
and then it just stayed there nice. the entire year. I've been doing like the same amount of sessions the entire year. Which on average, how many is that? 125. So in a month, yeah. So but, and you're now tier three, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm I can get the tier three plus whenever I take the precision nutrition test, but I've been like holding off on that. So there's one. You're there for until you go three EFTI and you get a two, right? It's yeah, EFTI is there's EFTI. You start off in one, you do EFTI two, and then you graduate to tier two, and then to get tier three, you have to do EFTI once again, so another semester of it. And these semesters are typically, I think, like twelve weeks, like mm -hmm. eight to twelve weeks, so anywhere between two to three months. And then you for tier three, you have to hit. I think it's. In six weeks, you have to do 42 sessions for each of the two weeks in those six mm -hmm. weeks, or you have to do 95 twice in a row, so two months or three months. I, they keep changing the rules on that, I think, so I don't really remember what it was, but if you hit that, then you get, and you finish the EFDI, then you can get Tier 3. So that's like one of the harder ones. And then Tier 3 plus, you have to... You have to hit the numbers first before you can enroll into the educational program. Gotcha. So I think it's like, on average, you have to hit 95 a month. Mm -hmm. So you can't just hit 95 a couple of times. You have to hit that on average before they let you enroll. And so once you're enrolled, then you just have to pass the mm -hmm. test. It's easy. Year one, you said you started training in April. How much did you make year one? 27,000. It's pretty cool because four months, not counting he hit the average for the average personal trainer what they say is 28 to 32 so you add in another four months you're definitely doing better than the average personal trainer you got to weather that storm so what were some of the hardest uh, things that you maybe didn't think about or looking back now you're like this was really challenging this hurdle to, uh, to overcome uh well before i started training i was homeless so twenty-seven thousand was awesome mm -hmm. to start with <laughs> so it was just better than what i had before um but it, it, I would say the biggest struggle that, that I see most trainers go through that I didn't really go through is like, it, you're doing a lot more work than what you feel like you should be getting paid for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, I've, this has just been my experience at Equinox, a lot of trainers come, a lot of people get that job because they think it's gonna be a fun, easy job. And it's just not. <laughs> Equinox, is a steel jungle dude it's a really hard place to do well and it takes a certain kind of breed of people to do well there you either have to be really efficient really good at your job very professional or steel you steel jungle <laughs> that's good or you have to have like a kind of like a, i don't know junkyard dog attitude a little bit where like nothing's going to phase mm -hmm. you and you're just going to get through it so like i've seen some trainers who are just exceptional trainers have been training for a long time and are that I'm going to do well because of that but then like pretty much everyone that starts off fresh um, has never been a trainer before if they don't have like that grit and they'll they'll get up at four in the morning and not come home till 10 30 at night I don't see them making it a whole lot four to ten get used to that and you're not getting paid for all those hours either no if you're getting paid for like eight of them mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so it's you gotta so if you if you can job reflect on the 18 months you've been there you guys currently have what 32 trainers 40 40 how many trainers would you have say have gone through and quit and you a lot uh, probably like 25 or something I don't I can't I'm just guessing mm -hmm. I, I've I forget about some sometimes yep. and I'll be like oh yeah this dude used to work <laughs> But yeah, dude, probably like, we lose probably a trainer a month, sometimes more. Like I think this month we're losing three or four. I don't and, know. And if you so, talk to them, what do you, why do you think they're leaving? Well, the most rare answer is I got a better job. Mm -hmm. So like one of my buddies that was just training with me uh, at Equinox, he got a six figure job as a product manager for a fitness technology company. So I was like, hey man, I would take that shit yeah. too. Uh, and then another one got a job as a tier X trainer in the Chicago, Chicago Equinox. Mm -hmm. um, so 
he's doing that more for family reasons than anything. But he's and yeah, he's going to make more money. He's one of the top trainers. Yeah, right? and, one, and the cost of living is lower there and everything. He's trying to buy a house. He just had a kid. Um, and you're how young? I'm 27. I mean, if you're a 30, 32 year old who has a family, it's if you go in there with the expectation I'm going to make 100 grand right away, I'm going to be able to hang out with my family. Is that realistic? No, you're fucked. <laughs> it's not happening, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, unless that somehow like drives you to do more, I know it would for me. Uh, so maybe like I'm I'm trying to buy a condo or something at the end of next year, or maybe a house. I don't know. Probably a condo. It's L.A. Uh, so that's driving me to do even better next year than I did this year, yeah. and that's what like my meetings have been with my, my managers. Mm -hmm. is I want to do even better, even though I did really well this year, is because I'm trying to. Do like do things like buy a house and maybe mm -hmm. settle down here, um, but now you're that that first year you're done for. And also like the job security of being a trainer, pretty much like, I can I feel like this applies anywhere, not just Equinox. It's very like shady because you could lose five clients in a month, and that's like half your income. So that can happen at any yeah. time. Any time, right? So, so, so how how are you prepared to weather that storm? The, I uh, save a lot of my money. Okay, good. I you know I try to save. Do you money. get a vacation pay? No. So again, one of the things that people don't realize, if you think this is gonna be a nine to five, and you're gonna get two weeks off a year, you, know, you just told me that you had to go back home in South Africa and you took yeah. ten days off, seven days off. I took five days off. I was flying for three of them. <laughs> and your monthly paycheck took about a quarter, 25%? Uh, about 65%. Lower? Lower, yeah. So if you're making 10 grand a month, that means you go home and you miss, I don't know, six, seven days of training, <laughs> you're going to be making 3500 How are you prepared for that? Right now, the market's at one of the peaks that we've been through in a long time. What about when the market crashes? How are you prepared for that? So I, I love these, these interviews just to, to put it all out there. I, I feel like it's glorified online, social media. People think it's going to be really easy, but this is just the reality of the situation. And he's not talking bad about it by any means. It's a, it's a great gig. And you said earlier that you would never want to own a gym. No. <laughs> no. You see how passionately he said that? Why not? Uh, I don't want to deal with any of the shit you're dealing with. So like, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> I don't want to. Citation <laughs> is different. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to deal with uh, you know managing employees too much. I don't want to deal with managing you know laws and codes and that's all stuff that I don't want to do. I want to train. Mm -hmm. Like that's the cool thing about my job is I pretty much just train now. Especially now that I do the amount of sessions where I never have to do any of the extra work that Equinox what we'll have you do mm -hmm. all my entire job is just to like one-on-one -on -one sessions with people yeah i basically have lunch with people like not eight, that bad right th four to eight times sometimes 12 times in a day so it's not that bad and what he said earlier is important rich so he has a pool of clients who have the supplementary income to pay for training on average what do you charge i think my rate right now is 130. 130 he gets a cut of that and what is your cut 50 percent it, all right, so this is something I should probably talk about too with Equinox, because Equinox is, is it's very tricky. We have like five different sets of income that come in all at once and they're all taxed differently. But basically the, the big one is you have to hit 42 sessions in two weeks and then you get what we call pay period bonus. So your income per session almost doubles. So you do 42 you'll probably make almost a thousand dollars more in that paycheck than what you would have if you did 41. Yeah. So that's bi monthly too. Yeah, so we get two paychecks in a well we technically get three paychecks in a month. Um, sometimes more because it's every two weeks. It's your bonus one, right? You also get the monthly bonus. And then if you do ninety five or more, you get another I think it's two dollars per session. And then if you do 110, you get another 275. And then if you do uh, 125, this is the one I always shoot for because it goes, it's like a, the biggest jump from in bonuses. So if you do 125, you get like an extra six bucks per session, which at 125 times six, that's almost, it's like, I think I get like after tax, like 700 
and something, 750 mm -hmm. just on that bonus every month. Yeah. Um, and, and then if I miss, if I go down to like 118 or 110, it's only like a couple hundred dollars less, so it's not that bad. Um, but going, you know, that, and then there's 140, and 145, and 160, and those are only slightly higher than mm -hmm. the 125. And then we also get bonuses. You can get up to three annual bonuses. There's L2 and L3, which is if you do 670 sessions or something in six months, uh, you get like your average one week's pay, which is typically like a thousand something dollars. Yeah. So after tax, and bonuses get taxed at like 40%. So you get, they, you know, Uncle Sam takes a huge chunk mm -hmm. of that. Um, and then you get L2, which is basically double. By the end of the year, and then there's like L3, which is like very high up. It's like 1,500 in a year, and they're all about a week's pay. But obviously, yeah. if you're doing a lot of sessions, your average week's pay mm -hmm. is higher. So those are like little bonuses that we kind of get. And then you get like what other bonuses do you get? If one of your clients does 200 sessions, you get a $500 bonus. You know, it's lots of little perks to keep you yeah. motivated financially, at least. Uh, you get insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you're given opportunities to get your clients versus, versus if you're an independent contractor, you got to go find your clients. And do you know people that have left? And it happens. People are going to leave. They steal their clients. They go out there. Uh, I don't know if you've kept in contact with any of those people, how they're doing, with the struggles that they've encountered. I pretty much only know my clients in life. <laughs> so, like, I, I've pretty much shut out most people besides my clients mm -hmm. because. I think in total, since I've started training, I think I've had, and some of these are just like a few sessions, but like, I think maybe like 35 or 40 clients total. I'm currently training about 20. Mm -hmm. um, so about double that, obviously. Uh, and obviously that some fell off as I got more expensive. Um, and some were, but, and I, so that's like 20, plus relationships so probably like 30 relationships that i have to maintain yeah so i don't have time for friends <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you were saying earlier i thought was great was um and this is just expectations where you kind of have to have thick skin and have really open communication with not only maybe your coworkers but with your boss because you know, you're going to have clients that are going to for example, not wear shoes. And who gets who gets a text message for that? I get fucking yelled at. <laughs> so, yeah. But like, I don't know. It's it's a it's it's definitely if you do well at Equinox, you know they 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 kind of let you slide with some more. So this is the beginning. If you are making your boss a lot of money, you're you're going to be fine. You're not necessarily micromanage, but if you're not hitting the in their case, 42 sessions per week. You're going to have more meetings. Um, why you got to go on the floor, too. Yep, floor shifts. So there's just there's, there's a lot going on. But at the end of the day, if you show up at Equinox, you do your work, you get people, you take care of your business, and if you're smart and you retain them, they're going to stick around for a while. Yeah. Because they make a you know, good amount of money. You said right now you're training like a prince or something like that. Yeah, well, he, just when he's in town. Mm -hmm. But, like, one of the princes of Abu Dhabi or Dubai mm -hmm. is, you know, was having his vacation in Santa Monica, yeah. and he selected me as his trainer, or I was given him by one of the membership advisors, and you know, so he he had amazing results. He did really well. He also, I think, he had some sort of genetic gift because I'd never seen anyone do what he did in a month, um, and so you know, now he's flying me out <laughs> out there. It's pretty cool. So I've known some trainers at Equinox. They met. Developers and they've helped them make apps. Uh, so you're meeting really cool people that will fly you places. Lots of opportunities for networking, growing your business, and becoming a better trainer. But don't think the expectations are just going to be simple work. If you're not training regularly, if you're not out there hustling, you're going to be micromanaged, and you're going to have someone probably, whether it's via text or email, getting on you a lot. Yeah, and uh, maybe some of the trainers who you know or at the time knew who didn't make it, what would you attribute that to? Them not succeeding yeah. at Equinox. Ninety percent of the time, it's because they didn't. It's like I said earlier, they didn't get into training. Um, the, the because they thought it was they had an intense passion for mm -hmm. it. They thought it would be like a fun, easy job, and. 
I've had a lot of crazy jobs. I work construction, I work tra heavy transportation. I was just doorman in Boston, which is nuts. And, um, you know, I also worked in like corporate and financial district and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, this is hands down the hardest job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. As far as work, the amount of work I have to do and how, like, so if I didn't lo love this, as much as I do, and if it didn't have some sort of emotional connection to me um, with it, I don't see how anyone could do it. <laughs> and I tell I tell the new people all the time, like if you don't absolutely love doing this, and this isn't like some sort of like I'm fucked up, so I have like I have like these weird insecurities, and the gym makes me feel safe, and um, working out has been such a big part of my life especially you know because you know my story about how I turned around my life like the gym was such a huge part of that mm -hmm. so that's why I don't see myself ever not doing this and even when I get job offers or people talking to me about other things I can do I'm like well as long as I'm still training at least a few people every day I can do that like I can't stop training there's it's pretty cool before I turn the camera on I said, how long? I said, you have to answer this question on the camera. I said, how long do you think you'll, you'll be in Equinox? What was your answer? Probably forever. <laughs> That's cool. I love that because it's just to show you that a lot of people will go in with a mindset. You get certified. You do a little weekend course. I, I was talking to a student the other day, and we looked at some online trainer, and she called herself a nutritionist and trainer. And it was a two-day, six-hour course that she did. And she was an idiot. She had no idea what she was talking about. And it showed with her results, also with her clients. And so you have these people that come in with the expectations that oh, I'm just going to go in there and get some experience. I'm going to train. I'm going to go out there and get my own clients. I'm going to quit. I'm going to steal the clients. I'll be an online trainer. It's all glorified. It's just, it's not that easy. I love stories like that where you go in, you work hard. It's not like anything. You're passionate about what you do. Every time I see you, you're always smiling. You're having a good time. You enjoy what you do, and you're a great trainer. But just like with anything, there's, it's hard work. Yeah, but I also like the people I work for. So like I know Annie's probably gonna watch this, <laughs> but like if Annie wasn't my boss and Sarah wasn't my general manager and you know and my coworkers weren't who they were, like the the Santa Monica Equinox is pretty has a pretty good reputation for having some of the best trainers in Equinox. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily always for sessions. I mean we do bring in a lot of sessions for a club, but uh, mm -hmm. we our trainers are, we have such a diverse group of trainers. And I don't mean that by their race, I mean by like their training styles. Yeah. So you, the, the culture at my club is so amazing and my bosses are such amazing people that I could see myself working for them for a very long time mm -hmm. because I, I'm very loyal to these people. And you know, I attribute how good I am now to them. Not, I don't, I personally don't believe I did a lot. Like, mm -hmm. as far as, like, I, I just followed what these people said. A lot of times I've added my own spice to it. But it, that was that's a big reason why I think I'll be there forever. And I'm sure if Annie leaves, that'll be the first time I'll even think about <laughs> working cool. somewhere yeah, else. That says a lot about the yeah. environment, the cohesion, and, you know, just uh, that's really neat to yeah. hear. I mean, I did, I've never done my taxes. And so Annie, he's done his taxes, but he <laughs> clarifies the IRS doesn't see you. <laughs> but like that's because I like most of the time I lived in other countries, and like I never even made enough to get taxed. Mm -hmm. So like when when tax season came around this year, and like I didn't know what to do, Annie sat down with me for a long time yeah. and like walked me through how to do my taxes. So that was so like he a did whole, do his taxes, but you know yeah, you I did my taxes. You look out, I'm saying I didn't do it before. Yeah. So like it was like it was really nice. To, like she does way more than just. And so that's a big reason why I like that club mm -hmm. in particular. And I feel like it's important for you to find that because I know trainers that are better than me um, at other clubs mm -hmm. that hate their lives. Yeah. So like I, I struck gold in a lot of ways yeah. at my club. So I don't like to take all the credit for my success there or, or, or most of it at all because I feel like it was the people around me, mm -hmm. the environment I was in, also just the situation that I was coming into. Like, I, you know, I had nothing to lose when I became a trainer. So it was like, you know, I, I got really lucky and this job has been so good to me that I will invest everything I have into it. And I believe that's what all trainers should do. Yeah. Um, because I don't see how you make it without it's great. And so let's get to the some some fun stuff.
So they invest in your education. Do you know how many gyms are in Inkelox? I mean, I mean, there are There's like 100, something, 130. You said 99, they're supposed to get to 100, of which they invest apparently about two and a half million dollars into Canadian education. So they look out after you guys. But at the same time, it is corporate. And with corporate comes micromanagement. You guys have been going through some new, uh, would you say rules or what would you say? No, just taking away shit from us. <laughs> okay. Like what? Like we're not allowed to work out at other gyms, other Equinoxes anymore. Before we used to be able to just go in and check in at any Equinox as if we're a member. Mm -hmm. um, can't do that anymore. Um, you know, that's like the, the latest, biggest one. I, um, I also think they, they changed the so annual. You can't sign a new contract. Oh yeah, we had to sign some contract. I don't remember when this was. I think it was at the beginning of the year. Where like if I train people outside of Equinox uh, at another health club, whether they're an Equinox member or not, um, specific club, I don't think private training at home counts. Uh, you can get fined like thousands of dollars per That's session. That's crazy. Right? And they technically also own all my intellectual property. Mm -hmm. now. So if I invent anything, it's Equinoxes. Yeah. So there's like a loophole to that though. You could just invent an LLC. Yeah, We're not going to start an LLC. So. But I, I, the, the purpose I've, I've got Chris in here today is I just wanted to get some feedback from the life of the trainer. He's been there 18 months. He's still going strong. And it's really neat to see he's still passionate about it. He's not talking bad about the brand at all. I have I've met a lot of trainers that do. And when you dig deeper, they didn't have the grit. They weren't educated. They really didn't know how to help their clients. They have false expectations. And would you feel like the school helped prepare you to at least be successful at a, at a gym like Equinox? Your school? Yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like hands down. Like as far as like the exercise science and the kinesiology, biomechanics, and then the importance of knowing that was definitely the biggest thing that I took from that. Because I went into this knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. I just played professional sports before, but I never actually knew the science about anything. And like the science is so complicated, but once you know it, it makes everything so simple. And like training people is so simple once you know the science and it's not that hard mm -hmm. anymore. Like I've like when I got the Prince of Dubai, I had like 20 minutes to prepare for his first session and blow his socks off. So like, but because I kind of already, I know how to like judge people really quick and see like how what their asymmetrical dispositions are based on their injury, what they can and can't do, and how to put them through a good workout without really putting them at a lot of risk and shit like that. So like that, all that made me be able to go, like has made me more versatile and more flexible in the way I train, which I feel like is a huge part why I do so well. Um, I can train almost anyone and any style other than like specific things like Olympic lifting. I wouldn't train people yeah. in Olympic lifting. But, you can throw me any client from any background and I'll be able to somehow make them enjoy their hour with me and also get results at the same time. And so like that was for me the biggest thing was like you took this really large complex thing which is science behind all those things, biomechanics, kinesiology, bioenergetics, and you just made it this simple kind of thing that I can now use to attack all my sessions. And that was, that was hands down the best thing I learned from going through your academy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Appreciate that. That's all that's good to hear. Now, is there any last words you have to any trainers watching this or maybe soon to be trainers? Uh, we've, we've done some videos on the interview process at Equinox. At least in the Southern California area, Equinox is definitely the, the higher end of the gyms. And you know, if I were to work anywhere, I would choose Equinox. I think it's great. I love the environment. I love the um, I love my side of it, where I can go there as a member, and you know, but it's a little different when you're training there. But I think with the realistic expectations, if you go in there knowing that it's not going to be your nine to five, you got to work long days, and it's probably not even five days a week. It's closer to seven. Six, yeah. Six days. What days do you take off? I take some days off. Well, you're required to. I would definitely work days if they let me. <laughs> <laughs> so six days, you're looking at maybe ten to fourteen hour days, a lot of hours, but at the same time, it's rewarding and things that you do not get in the corporate industry. You do get insurance, but you do not get vacation pay. 50% of the sessions, no you don't. You're gonna be probably closer to 30 to 35. You're given a pool of clients where you get them and bring them in. You don't have to work on managing other people. You don't have to buy 
equipment, and that's you see my gym, my gym, the power crap compared to Equinox. That's high end, expensive gear and equipment. So you're given the opportunity to succeed, and it's a great environment. So any last little words or anyone? Or um, you know, two things probably. Uh, learn to develop a relationship with your clients, and don't be scared to like become their friend. I know that at Equinox, I feel like it's overly professional, almost, and a lot of people try to be overly professional as trainers. But I, on Test Testosterone Nation, they just posted that weird little poll where, would you rather be with a trainer that has a great personality that you love, or one that knows absolutely everything about the fitness, about science of fitness, and almost everyone picked the personality. So, Nick, in my book, the P is personality, how to be a successful personal trainer. Yeah, so like that is hands down the reason why I'm successful at Equinox. As far as like not having these like ups and downs in my business, my business has been very consistent because I've had the same 20 clients all year. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're my friends. I go out with them, I have dinner with them, I go on vacation with them, you know, I don't I don't keep them separate from my life. They're a part of my life now, and I, I text them late at night. I, I became friends, you know, and so that is why they stayed with me when the package just ran out and they were renewed. And I know that it's such a professional industry in some places that people forget that little relationship or how important that is, especially with client retention. And my, my trainer, I don't have any fear that another trainer I know that I've got his, his or her loyalty because of how good of friends we've become and that I've shown them that I actually care about them and not just, I'm not just trying to be a good trainer, I'm trying to be their friend. And people appreciate that a lot more than just a good trainer. Yeah. And then the second thing, I would just jump quick on with all due respect, he's a great trainer and we understand because they're getting results and that's what we're talking about, but you will hear people count that and say, don't become friends with your clients, but he's super showing up late, he's not working out five minutes before the session, smelling and taking them for granted. So he still maintains that professionalism, and, but he's able to draw in a bond. And so when he says that he's able to use his personality to create that friendship, it's helping him to be better, whereas other people who are trained take their clients for granted, show up late, do half-ass workouts, have this mentality, it's like, oh, you're my buddy now. So he's not doing this. The second part. I thought that was a given. <laughs> it's not. I meant the whole, like, I meant more the, like, that's all, like, God, you should do that at any job. Common sense isn't common action, so that's why I clarified. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I don't, like, I, I try to be more than just a trainer with my clients. I try to be their friend on some level. Yeah. Or no, I, I got you. So, I got you. I love that. So that's more of a message that's going to get across. And, um, I try to be as understanding as possible. I try not to make my clients scared of me. But I used to be that. I remember a few times where a few more clients were scared to cancel sessions and stuff. I don't want them to be that necessarily. I want them to feel comfortable talking about what's going on in their life. You know, I feel like I should get paid most on the side for being a therapist. <laughs> I've become so like such a therapist to my clients. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean when I said you don't have to be overly professional. Like. And you just, yeah. you know, you just be like a doctor or something, mm -hmm. you know, like be their friends. And then the second thing I would say is like, if you don't have that weird emotional connection to, to, to training or to fitness, where it's like a special part of your life, I don't see how you're going to do this for a long time. Yeah. It has to be something that's like in you that you can, so like, if you think it's going to be a fun, easy job, you're fucking wrong. It's so far from that. The only thing that makes a lot of trainers do this for so many years is because they absolutely love doing this. Not for the money, because clearly it's not that great. They, we have we can make a good amount, but it's like it kind of caps out at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, you're going to work all the time. This is going to become your life. That's why most of my friends are my clients. <laughs> when you say hard work, it's not 40 hours a week. You're putting in way more than 40 hours Probably a week. easily 60. Mm -hmm. easily, yeah. So every day... You're in the environment, it's hard work, and you'll be successful with that mindset. Where, yeah, we're weird. It's like I get excited to wake up at 4 o'clock to get to the gym. For me, as a gym owner, I'm, I'm here all the time. 
Sports in West Hollywood, Santa Monica, our new gyms that we're going to open. I expect to be there all the time. I'm not just going to open it and then leave. It's like this is this is your baby and your clients are your baby. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate everything. Chris, awesome trainer. If you're near the Santa Monica and you, you're a member at Equinox, you got to get a session through him. So I appreciate everything. Thank you. You've done awesome, and I'm proud of you. Thank you.